Welcome to another episode of Air Power Live. Today, the importance of ground in finishing. Why is ground important in a finishing operation, Eddie? Things can build up a charge, they can dissipate, and they can have a static discharge, and it'll be bad news for the flammables. Well, that's a good reason. What's another reason? Lots of reasons. Without a ground, electrostatic charged paints, liquids, powders don't have any place to go. They've got to go to ground. So you have to ground your parts so that they are accepting the charge that you put on the particles and then we must bleed that charge off straight to ground to true earth ground. We'll talk about that in yep. just a minute. One thing I want to ask you though, we're going to talk about this because everybody needs to know. I've been in the finishing industry a long time. People refer to ground, but there's that word that comes up all the time. True earth ground. Those that are more worried about ground are always talking about true earth ground. Right. How does that, how, how does true earth ground play into the facts of finishing in your booth? One, if I take my components, my feed vessel or my parts and just hook them to say a booth or your conduit outside the booth that's not really a known earth ground we just don't trust it to be an earth ground the only thing we really trust to be an earth ground is a ground rod this thing is eight foot long don't cut it off drive it in the ground get it down there right put it all the way down and then you have clamps that go on the end of it that you can attach your parts to, to full ground, clamps like this. The other style. Clamps like this. If you're in the booth, spraying in the booth all the time, a ground rod, a brass ground strip, or strip, not rod, but grounding strip is better for you to have here, but you must keep it clean. This one doesn't have paint all over it if you notice that. If it's got paint on it, then it's isolated, then you're not going to get a good ground. So you got to have this on here, and you got to make sure that the wire that you use, and for you folks that are from the south, that's war, you have to have stranded wire. Can you see that? This is multiple strands. You can't use solid core. You have to have multiple strands. Typical ground cables have a stripe in them pretty identifiable. This comes with a lot of the units that we sell, the electrostatic units. It's got a clamp that you can clamp onto that ground rod. The other end, wherever you need it to clamp to, for a hose, to a pot, to a pail, whatever it needs to clamp to. So typically those come with a unit for things that roll in and out near the booth, like a portable pump or something. Expandable, nice, easy to use. Nice clip on the other side, very strong spring. It's important that this be clean. So if you got to go put it on a wire brush or whatever and keep the paint off of it, keep the paint off of it, no problem. Let's talk about this in, in a grander uh, <clears throat> spectrum here. When we talk about a finishing booth or a finishing operation, let's touch on things. What, what in a liquid or a powder booth needs to be grounded? So we, it's, it's pretty obvious, everybody talks about grounding the part. So we're looking at part connection all the way back, okay? And we know that that's gotta be grounded. We, we know that typically the gun has to be grounded, the controller has to be grounded. But let's talk about those other things. I know you, talk, you were touching on a few of them there, but let's touch on the different things that must be grounded for a smooth operation. Right. As a rule, we're talking about solvent-based coatings here. So keep that in mind. Not necessarily water-based for, for the moment for this ground. This is attached. This is a great grounding clamp. Sharp points. A lot of pressure. A lot of tension here from the spring, right? You cannot use a plastic bucket and expect it to be groundable. It is not. Don't use them in your finishing operation. Only use a metal bucket. 
if you use a liner, make sure that the liner is static dissipating also. Most of the, the white ones are not necessarily static dissipating. The pink ones always are. Ground it to the bale if you want, the handle, or ground it to here, right? If you're spraying out of a pressure pot, ground your pressure pot. You've got to have it grounded. If you're spraying from a pump, you ground the pump. You ground those sources. If we start the ground here, then we don't have any problem as the way we go out, right? So when we ground this, we're using this. Use whatever clamp that you want to use. Make sure it's a good one in stranded wire and with a good force. Anything that would be in the booth, say I had this in my booth and I had it covered up and I wanted to flush inside of it and it stays in here, it needs to be grounded too, right? You have to have it grounded too. Any metal object, like the conveyor up there, any metal object that's inside the booth must be grounded because if you're spraying electrostatically, it will pick up a charge. If you don't ground it, it will be a, become a capacitor and a capacitor stores energy and when you come to touch it, it will release that energy and shock you and create a spark that might be enough to ignite flame. So watch that. Yeah, the substrates can also take the charge when they're hanging from yep. the conveyor rack or the rack or the rolling rack. So we want to make sure that we are grounding those so that we don't have issues. Um, let's talk about hooks. Well, first of all, I want to make something really clear here. When you're, when you're troubleshooting your coating operation, you're having rejects because you're not getting enough paint into an area. Uh, your recessed areas of your parts that you know have Faraday issues, hard to reach geometries, and the paint's not going there. We, there there's a few issues to look at. One is your approach to the part, the actual operator and how they're approaching the technique. part. Technique. But, uh, and, and that's another thing altogether. That's a lot of training. But the science behind that with the Faraday cage and ground uh, is, is marries so tightly to the fact that unless you have that part full grounded perfectly, you're not going to be able to easily get that paint into that Faraday area. The Faraday area, even if it's grounded, is still a difficult, it still can be difficult. The, the Faraday phenomenon is there no matter how good the ground, but it allows you to paint better if it is well grounded, the, the substrate. So when I was in the, the paint market selling powder coating and working in the powder market troubleshooting, the first thing that I did is I would trace ground all the way back to the original source. I would find the ground rod that was buried in the ground with that much, you know, on top, ab exposed afterwards. People will say, how far do we need to drive the ground rod into the ground? As far as you can get it, you know, and if, if you can get it in with this much on the top, just enough to get a hook onto or a clamp onto, you've done a great job. Uh, and we will talk about that. Uh, so <clears throat> you go from there to the wire that leaves there, the connector and the wire that leaves there that goes to the rack that's holding the part. If that clamp at that time, whatever style clamp it is, is clamping onto the substrate or onto the rack and the rack has powder build up on it, you know, like this, and you're clamping there, you've just killed your ground right there. You, you've got nothing. If it's in an area like this where there's a little bit of paint. Maybe. Maybe, it's questionable. But then you've got to follow it. From that point, you've got to go look at where the rack and the hook connect. So the rack rod or the top or like this, where that connection is. And then you've got to look at this connection to the actual part the substrate that's hanging so everywhere that you go down that everywhere you go down that path right the conveyor is the start that's grounded separately then the hook right if you have load bars that have multiple parts on it then that's a, a conveyor ized if you will system that has an opportunity to build up paint on it as well because it's grounded and it's attracted to it, the paint right. is. 
oftentimes you have multiple hooks. So if this hook and this hook are connected, then that's another ground point. When yep. we hang our parts off of it, right, then here's our other, our final ground. So chase it back at each point. Each point has a resistance there that could be there that's, that's causing you ground issues. If you hear or see arcing, tick, 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 pop, 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 you have a bad ground. We have charged the part with electrostatic coating process. We don't mean to charge the part. That's not what we want to do, but we put charged particles on it. It's in the field. We do charge it, but that's okay because we're going to bleed it straight to ground, right? We're going to take it and put it right into the earth. That's an earth ground. It's going to take the charge from this and put it here where it belongs and not this become a capacitor to shock you later. So each each hook point is paramount that yep. it's clean. These are diamond shaped hooks right here. Better than round hooks. A round hook doesn't stay clean as well. The sharp edge on the diamond hooks allows that to dig into the part and keep keep a cleaner surface. And when it comes to hooks, a lot of it has to do with proper <clears throat> maintenance. You've got, if you're running an operation and you're using hooks constantly in your operation, you've got to look at a way for preventative maintenance to be instilled into this to where we're able to take hooks off the line, burn them off, clean them, blast them, whatever that whatever that is chemical uh, strip fluidized bed sand hot sand yep. there's multiple methods but the the important thing is get it clean and do it on a proper rotation average rule of thumb four passes through the system yank it off clean it again but that that's every average. every bit of that decision is based on how much coating is getting on your hooks in that process we've got your parts grounded We've got your hooks grounded. We've got your conveyor grounded. We have your supply grounded, right? If it's powder, you're grounding the um, controller to the ground, right? We want to keep that separate while we're talking about ground. Do not take, if this was connected to your powder controller, do not take the other end and attach it to your part we do not want to send that voltage back into the chassis of the electronics in that controller. Don't do that. Make it a separate ground. So what happens if I'm spraying with an electrostatic gun, whether it's liquid or powder? How is the operator grounded, right? Yep. It's paramount. This is a black plastic composite material. It is groundable. We have a groundable air hose that would go on here. And if I'm the operator and I put on Gloves like this that you see in every facility, am I grounded? What do you think, folks? Oh, we're not. No, you're correct. We are not grounded. What if I use one of the nitro gloves? What if I use one of these? Am I grounded with one of these? No? You cut your palm out. Why would I do that? Exactly. Then I get pain on me. There's no reason. Ah, oh, gee. Well, if you're... Here's the what thing. about one of these? But what if I wore these? So it's kind of a joke. We've talked about this. You know, people will cut the hand out of these gloves so that they can get a palm to palm, palm to gun. But the issues with that, if you're if you're not coating with, if you're getting the proper ground in the first place, the paint's oh. not flying back at you you're getting the paint where it needs to go if everything's grounded properly. Right. So, we're not going to worry about this so much. We're, we're going to worry about my contact to here, right? We have, and these guns come with, groundable gloves. This strip is ground right here. So your palm is grounded, and you're grounded when you grab the glove into your hand and your, and your and your gun. So that fits in there. I'm grounded. I don't have to worry about paint getting on me and everything's cool, right? We have gun covers that go over this that we can put on here to keep all the rest of this clean, right? So if I'm grounded, paint's attracted to ground, the electrostatic paint's attracted to ground, and if your part is not grounded well, it's going to come back at you and it's going to come back at the gun. If we take gun covers and use them 
then that's something that will protect this, right? So the folks that say, nah, man, I just don't want to do that. I, I, I don't want to get my, my hand painted. You're not going to be painted. It's all going to be up inside the cover, and you won't have any trouble with that coming back at you. So it protects you. It protects the gun. Gun cleanup's easier, and everybody's going home safely, right? Yep. All right. Um, let's clean, let's uh, yeah. Go ahead and talk. Let's talk about that real quick. Dainty parts may not be able to have a large hook. If you need to, just get some wire, baling wire, what everybody calls yep. it, right? Just some steel wire, some galvanized wire, what have you. Just put that on up here, hang your parts from it. Works fine too. And it's disposable. It's not going to cost you much. And, you can throw it away. And when you get done, when you get done with your run, you just use a pair of wire cutters and like literally cut the parts off one by one as you go, and then it, it's a Toss quick process. Super quick process. Uh, couple thank yous to get today. I want to thank Chris Saylor. Chris Saylor. Thank you, uh, Chris Saylor. Shurcon. Chris Saylor with Shurcon provided some racks for us to, or some hooks for us today. And we're going to talk about these in other videos, but I just wanted to put an emphasis on this. Uh, as, a, as a powder coating rep and now an equipment rep for a, a, a very long time, these were always my favorite. And I still, when I work with customers, I suggest these all the time. It's a, it's a square rod stock bent on the edge, on an edge. And it's just really a great way to keep a solid connector. Um, the, the other thing that you can, or the other area that you can use the same thought process is when you have a rack, a rolling rack in a plant, uh, and the racks always have some kind of a beam or uh, that goes across the top of it. And a lot of times people just use a round stock of some kind but if you'll get square stock and you actually weld it in place with a tip straight up on the top that plus this type of a hook or even using the large master hooks around it give you a way to quickly clean that little edge on both the the, the hooks and the the master rack uh, beam to get just a really good connection really fast which improves ground gets you a good true earth ground and uh, achieve the best coating possible as fast as possible which is the game right if you already got your racks built and want to improve that take some angle iron put it up on edge take the sharp edge tack it to your frame and then you can have a sharp edge to sharp edge and that prevents you from having to build all new racks and the tinfoil Tinfoils, tinfoil a lot of folks use tinfoil. It's a very simple way. If you have a high volume of paint that you're running through your, your job shop and you have one of those uh, beams on top of a rack that you hook parts to, you can wrap that in uh, a nice coating of tinfoil and very, you know, once it builds up a little bit and you start to have a little bit of a diminished ground, you just literally rake it off and put another strip up and you're good to go. It, it's a great hack for uh, for good It's an easy maintenance ground and, and not have to try to clean a, a whole big rack. That's it's, right. It's difficult to clean a big rolling rack. So that's a that's a great way to do that. Uh, I wanted to invite you to watch more air power videos. Uh, give us a call anytime at 800-334-1001. Uh, you can reach us at on the on the internet at airpower-usa.com. And what social media channels are we on, Eddie? All of them. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. And the best way to get help from us is call us. We'll come out, visit you, and we'll make sure that you got a good ground.